holy shit, the hat's on. Must be getting cold in here. Uh, yeah, it is, yeah, it's not too bad today, actually. It's, um, it's 12 degrees, but I'm sure it's gonna get a lot cooler when I get the fans on. Uh, so S1000R, uh, BMW 2018. Uh, it's in because it's really, really jerky and snatchy on the throttle, um, which they're not kind of that known for. They can be a little bit, and it always gives me an idea that has someone been in there playing around came to us with a race fit exhaust. Um, customer didn't really like it, had it baffled, and I know from experience that really sucks the life out of the bike. So he's changed the exhaust, but more to the point is I had a little read of the ECU, um, and it was as expected, which is the point of this video. Basically, I could see it had been mapped before. And because these are a little docile on the entry into the throttle, um, a lot of tuners, look at that and think it can be improved massively which it can and i've made the same mistake as what i've seen in this ecu you look at some of the maps in there and think wow you know we can really get some get some meat on the bone here and sure enough you can there's no doubt about it but it can turn the throttle into an on off switch now i made this mistake myself so i'll put my hands up to that and then spent a lot of time with a particular customer working through and building certain maps and then did the same with another customer to, to get some really, really good base maps. But this one here, I've read it out, seen that. So I'm gonna presume that's what the customer's kind of experience and feeling that we'll see when he comes to pick the bike up and test ride it, we'll, we'll get his opinion on it then. But being that we've changed the exhaust from this stubby race fit, to, uh, actually, yeah, it was race fit. I thought it was Austin Racing for a second, but yeah, it was race fit, uh, which I'm sure will be up for sale, so keep your eyes out for that. It's in lovely condition. Um, and if you're into that sort of thing, you know, brilliantly well made, and but ear bleedingly loud when you take the can out, um, which is what he didn't want. So we've gone for a nice long system with a long can. I'll show you a bit about that in a, in a while, because it's sort of a joint video between, you know, seeing these mapped, in a way that just, it just don't work putting it frankly. And also um, this Lextech system that we've got on there. So without further ado, I'm gonna get some base runs. I wanna see what this Lextech's making, but I've left the old map on there. So really it's not a true sort of measure, but I am gonna return it to stock straight after that run and do another run for comparison, just to sort of see, you know, mapping affecting the Lextech. Uh, does a stock map work better with the Lextech? And then obviously I'm gonna get the bike mapped and we'll see what she makes at the end. This particular exhaust uh, is 583 pounds and 99p, can't miss the 99. Um, and like I say, it's stainless. They also do titanium systems, uh, which yeah, they're more expensive, but they're still considerably cheaper than a lot of the mainstream branded options. Um, you know, here you've got a stainless steel exhaust for under 600 pounds, get this comes with a lifetime warranty. Now obviously that's against manufacturer's defects, but yeah, you heard me right. That comes with a lifetime warranty. That's what they tell us. No one's ever needed a claim on it whilst we've been selling them, but you know, there might be a time, but that's something to bear in mind. Yeah, Lextech lifetime warranty. I think it looks quite nice. Um, personally, I like the titanium style, sort of like brush finish uh, sleeve, but this chap's gone for the carbon finish. You know, that's the beauty. There's so many different styles, end caps, length, like GP style ones, you know, those little things. So yeah, these, these are cracking and I would never turn anyone off these. We fit quite a few of these. Obviously we supply them as well. Uh, most of the time we're supplying and fitting, but if you're watching this and you want mail order to fit yourself, just drop a, a message in the comments or find us on Facebook or email us or just pick up the phone um, and we can quote you for them. As you can see, we've left the belly pan off. We've done that just because of the amount of heat that can be generated. We don't want to do any damage to belly pans. It has happened in the past, obviously not directly our fault, but it does happen. Now this gentleman's opted for the longer carbon can. There are so many different cans available. So we can sort of do a bit of a mix and match. So that's a full system. Stainless steel. So 
year. Cutting back to me now, I've done some base runs. So what difference did the stock Mac make? Well, truth is not a lot, um, to be fair, but two very distinct differences, which obviously can only be mapping related when you take a look at the dyno chart when I'm about to point up, um, because they're very, very specific. Now, you're only gonna see me put two overlays on there, uh, but in reality, we sort of do about six runs uh, just to get the thing consistent and the bike up to temperature and the tire up to temperature and stuff like that, just to make it um, a fair example. Bearing in mind, this bike hasn't moved. All I've done is rewritten the map that was in the ECU, kept some of the sensors off, so we don't have uh, any issues with the bike. So we've kept that consistent, but taken away other elements of it and made that back to stock. Uh, and yeah, I think there's like half, horse, half, half, well, teeth back in, half a horsepower uh, up top. Um, but there's some distinct changes in the mid range and also around sort of 10,000 RPM. So let's just go and have a little look at that. So there's the two, you can see very little in peak power. Um, but you'll notice a distinct difference here and up here uh, with the blue line being the stock ECU map and the red one being the previous map. Now that could just be quite simply that it was mapped for the um, other exhaust, which makes sense. Um, so it's not a true comparison and this isn't going to be sort of a, a mix of, you know, was it the... So I don't want to use the word bad mapping, but was it the, 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 the mapping before? That's the torque there added, so you can still see, obviously, the differences there. And also, it highlights, you know, like I say, this isn't going to be uh, down to the previous mapping as such, because obviously the exhaust has changed, so it's not a true comparison. Um, really, you know, our comparison is when the customer comes to collect this bike and test ride it, and have we alleviated that on off throttle um, that he so badly hated? Um, this really is just a comparison between sort of seeing what different exhausts do. Because we get asked that a lot, you know, I've mapped my bike with X, uh, what if I change that, will it re remap it again? Sometimes it doesn't. I generally sort of say if it's relatively the same length and same bore, but just a different design that you prefer, um, you'll get away with it. But the moment you start changing bore and length, then yeah, that, that thing's gonna need a remap. Um, even if it's just to tweak little bits, but you know, our job is about getting things right. So yeah, to make it right again, it is, it is gonna need a remap. Um, so I'm gonna now get all my data uploaded that is my benchmark for these S1000s. Uh, once again, we're using Woolwich Racing software to uh, enable us to flash these ECUs. So I'm gonna get that written. Um, I'm also gonna get some runs done. Uh, we'll get some videos of that. Take a look at the, uh, the bike in action while I go and do some mapping. Bear in mind that is obviously the picture at 100%. Um, we can map across the board, um, Velda various throttle positions. In actual fact, um, I'll show you what I mean. Uh, we're mapping um, or showing you 100%, but the key here is the fact that every throttle position gets mapped out. Yes, that's what I mean. So there's an entire chart there that we refer to uh, whilst uh, mapping. You can see what is essentially the ETV values uh, across the top um, and the RPM. So when you see that, what you're looking at is when it tracks down what is 100% TPS, but then it will track the ETV number. So it won't just come straight down here unless you're running a one-to-one a -one, uh, ETV. Um, it will come across and work its way down and then open up to, to full ETV. Fact is, every throttle position gets mapped out. As we can see here, you'll have a, a look at the fuel maps and you can see all the various TPS elements uh, against RPM. Well, it's a little bit more complicated that in actual fact, that you'll see this with TPS uh, and RPM, but it also goes under engine load uh, and torque demand as well. Um, but that's, anyway, I won't bore you with that.
that's it all mapped up. Went a bit quicker for you guys looking at it than it did for me, but at least it's all mapped up. Just got to, um, yeah, just got to flash the ECU. Just put the fan temps back back up because um, we do lower them. It helps us on the rolling road, especially bikes like this have got rad guards and things like that. It's great for protection, but it does restrict the airflow a little bit. So we always drop the, the fan temps when we map. Um, so yeah, that's all done. All the diagnostic stuff's off now. Um, I'm guessing you're thinking, well, what did it make? Did it make any more? Uh, there was one point when I thought it wouldn't, but um, after so a few tweaks here, a few tweaks there, um, yeah, we have, so we'll have a look. There we are. So what have we got there? Yeah, 164 to 167. I'll take that, we'll pull out. We can see, obviously gains across the board really there. Um, yeah, that low down, reasonably the same is when it starts to open up. So there you go, there's another video about the S1000R Lextech exhaust and ECU mapping. Uh, my name's Tony and thanks for watching.